Hey guys, welcome back to ADSR Massive Simp Tutorials. Make sure you get yourself subscribed to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. Starting a new feature for today and the rest of this month. Uh, and we're going to be looking at these four extra controls, well, three of these four extra controls down here underneath. Well, it's in the macro section, but they're kind of like modulators, really. So, key tracking, after touch, velocity, and trigger random. And so, for the next four tutorials, we're going to be looking at ways that we can affect the sound and sound design using these modulators, really, uh, just to create some cool sounds and what they can do. And we're also going to be looking at velocity and key tracking how it is applied to envelopes inside Massive as well as you can see there you've got velocity and key tracking options for all these envelopes so the one of these kind of modulators or extra macro controls I'm not going to be looking at too much is the aftertouch because unfortunately my MIDI keyboard doesn't actually have aftertouch and feature aftertouch it's going to be quite difficult to show you how to use that macro control but we will be doing quite a lot of stuff with key tracking velocity and trigger random uh, and I was going to start off and show you how to make this kind of it's like a drum and chord sequence where I've got some velocity and key tracking macro set up that just kind of affect the sound in different ways so to explain these kind of macros briefly um, key tracking we've looked at in a couple of tutorials previously and uh, it basically applies to it's kind of like pitch sensitive the key tracking function so basically when you start modulating controllers with this key tracking it means you're going to get different values on a control depending on how high or low up the keyboard you're playing your notes so by default in Massive the oscillators have key tracking so they're pitch sensitive so when you play a C3 note it is actually C3 what you get back on these oscillators uh, and C4 is actually plays a C4 note so but then you can apply key tracking to the filter so when you play a, high, a, a note high up on the kind of keyboard scale the filter is going to be more open the cut frequency is going to be higher up when you play a note lower down the cut frequency is going to be much lower down so that's how key tracking works but we can actually modulate as many controllers as we want on Massive using key tracking which is a really cool feature there's also velocity which basically means we're going to get different values on controls depending on how hard or soft we press the key uh, and the amount of kind of range of velocity is determined by how much modulation we apply in these instances and also trigger random we're basically just going to get random values uh, and then again if we have quite a large kind of modulation range or amount we're going to get more kind of like different random values we can get on that controller and uh, the final one was after touch so just relates to kind of how you release the key once you've pressed the key but like I said I don't have after touch on this MIDI keyboard and I know um, quite a lot of other MIDI keyboards or little MIDI controllers don't feature after touch so I wasn't going to look at that one so we'll start off with this kind of drum and chord sequence and um, we'll just be build the sound and then look at how we can use velocity and key tracking in this instance to just get some different kind of like results on the sound depending on where we kind of like what notes we play back and also how hard we hit the key so let's start off with this new sound here and make a kick drum in oscillator one so we're going to use a sine wave to do this I pitch it down two octaves pull the wavetable position all the way to the left it's a nice deep sign that we're going to have here and when we're going to use a performer to modulate this sine wave so with this performer here click and drag the macro control of this over to the first modulation slot on the amp of oscillator one click and drag up so we've got full modulation being applied to this amp with this performer and then let's sync this performer and keep the ratios 1 over 16 push the X fade sequence to the top So we've kind of got that sort of 1 over 16 sequence going on. Uh, and let's make it a bit more like a kind of drum sequence. So 
load in some extra curves here. So we've got a bit of a kind of bit of a rhythm going on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this performer here to also modulate the pitch of this oscillator. Click and drag up so it's plus 24. So now I'm going to get a bit more of a kick drum sound. Can enhance this a bit by adding a tele tube. And this is where we could actually use one of our first macro controls down here. So if we drag the velocity macro control here, drag the crosshair of this over to the driver mount on the teletube. Because if you listen, if I play a note back, it's quite cool. I get quite different results depending on the, the kind of like the level of that drive. So with this velocity kind of like modulating this drive, click and drag up. So we've got this kind of nice range here. So now a soft press on the key or a hard press. We're getting kind of different amounts of distortion bent depending on how hard or how soft we press the key. And I'm actually going to use this velocity macro here as also as a kind of side chain to the pitch. So if I drag this velocity over here into the second pitch modulation slot on oscillator one, check the side chain feature, click the arrow to up. So now the velocity is acting as a control of the amount of pitch modulation we're applying to this oscillator. So if I press the key softly, get a deeper tone and it would actually be lower down the keyboard what's playing back. It's a kind of lower note. If I hit the key a bit harder, So we're actually kind of like, it's like velocity sensitive tonal sort of response, what we're getting off this oscillator. So you can get some really expressive kind of like sounds and playing using velocity in this way. So with that set up, let's set up the, the chord sequence next. So I'm turn on oscillator two, and I'm gonna use the color wavetable, which is a really nice sort of chord sound. And um, I'm going to set a performer up here and do a similar thing what we did with oscillator one. Drag the crosshair of this performer to the first modulation slot of the amp of oscillator two. Click and drag up. Set the sync to one over 16 again. X phase sequence to the top. And let's kind of put. keep the curves in on the 5 and the 13 and then we'll have it in the kind of where the snare would sort of typically sit. And then a little fill at the end and maybe just an extra one of these here. And looking over here now, the intensity control on the oscillators, it's kind of like a low pass filter. So, to the point where if we roll this all the way to the left, that color is going to be this, the oscillator is going to disappear pretty much altogether. So, one cool thing we can do is we we're talking about key tracking and filters before, and how a lower note on the keyboard and then the with the, with these the way the key tracking is set up on the filters we're going to get a lower kind of cut off frequency response so we could use that same principle to add some key tracking to this color oscillator here so if i drag this key tracking macro control or crosshair and drag it to the first modulation slot on the intensity of oscillator 2 click and drag up so now we've got key tracking on this color so if i turn off oscillator 1 for now and if i play like a C1 note. We're not getting much high frequency at all. If I play like a C4, so what's happening as as I play higher up the 
the keyboard this intensity control is more or less kind of doing this and if I play lower down it's kind of going back down here so so that's pretty cool so next thing we can do is add some hi-hats to this sequence so in this third LFO slot make this a performer again load in some curves quite a tight sort of envelope really for these hi-hats something like that and I'm going to load in some reverse curves at the bottom as well and then drag the crosshair of this performer to modulate the amp of the noise, click and drag up set the sync to 1 over 16 again and let's actually use bright noise it's a little bit of a kind of thinner noise and with these reverse curves down here let's we get a bit more of a kind of shuffly feel by pulling that X fade sequence down a bit and with the, the colour of this noise here, this is similar to the intensity uh, in, for the oscillators, it's a bit like a low pass filter so so we could actually use similar thing with what we did with the key tracking for oscillator 2 we could use some key tracking on the colour here as well so we take the crosshair from the key tracking over to the first modulation slot on the colour of the, the noise, click and drag up, so now we've got key tracked kind of colour. Mute the other two oscillators for now so we can hear a bit better. So C4, getting quite a nice amount of sort of top end. If I go down to like C1, and further and further down we're getting this this colour is kind of like more like it's round round here, you know, it's all the tops are filtered off and it's just kind of a deeper sort of sound. So which again is quite a cool feature. So, you know, higher up the keyboard we're gonna get more sort of like high frequency on these sounds and then lower down it's gonna get a bit deeper and just kind of a bit more like there's a low pass filter on everything. So with all of that set up, we could actually use this velocity to control the whole output of the synth now. So if we drag this velocity over to the amp, just softly press the key, we're getting quite a low volume. If I hit the key much harder, you know, we're getting almost full volume. So this is pretty cool for when you're designing quite expressive sounds or drum sounds or something in Massive, you've got this. That velocity is just controlling the whole thing. So let's add a little bit of reverb in here now. And do some quite quite a cool thing on the reverb. I'm going to use an envelope to control this dry wet amount just to give it a little bit of a sort of, I suppose just an interest really. And then, so I've backed off the attack of this envelope, pulled up the sustain, and I'm going to drag the crosshair of this envelope to the dry wet modulation slot here click and drag up so now we're going to get this reverb creep into the sound and if I move that size around you know I get some quite crazy results so what I'm going to do I'm going to use a velocity to modulate this, the size of the reverb as well so a kind of soft press on the key get a bit less reverb if I hit the key really hard we get loads of reverb creep into the sound so one other thing I could do actually is quite a cool little effect on on the hi-hats and just the, the whole output of the sound really go to this EQ slot here just EQ the sound a little bit so I'm going to boost some of the lows bit of a high shelf as well if I do a kind of like frequency boost if I boost this to about you know three quarters of the way around move that frequency around it sounds quite cool so it kind of 
affects because there's not much sustain on the kick or the the color the kind of chord stab it mainly affects the hi hats so I'm going to use an LFO to modulate this frequency drag this crosshair this LFO here to the first modulation slot on the frequency of this EQ set this LFO to synced the ratio 1 over 12 and then drag the X fade curve to the top so we've got this sine wave controlling this LFO and we're going to get this kind of shuffly sort of vibe with these hi hats now so pretty cool, put the kick and the sort of chord stab back in. And we get this really quite expressive sort of drum sequence going on depending on you know where what kind of notes we're kind of hitting and also how hard we're hitting the key. Another thing we could do here is we could start rather than using that velocity to control the output of the whole sound we could just mute that for now and say we just want to control the velocity of the, the kick drum here we just want this to be velocity sensitive so I can click and drag this crosshair this velocity over to the second modulation slot on the amp check the side chain feature so that kind of like goes white then the up arrow so now we've got velocity sensitive kick drum so a soft kind of press on the key We get much kick drum at all. Just keep it harder. Soft key, soft press on the key, no kick drum. It's a bit harder when we hear that kick drum. So, so yeah, there's a couple of things really. Just looking at these macros. So, hopefully, this sort of stuff kind of gets your head around velocity and key tracking a bit more, and how you can use it to sort of to great effect with sound design in Massive. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Any questions, please get in touch. Uh, make sure you get yourself over to the MassiveSynth.com website for tons more tutorials on Native Instruments Massive. And yeah, I hope to see you again soon. All right, cheers, bye.